Hello, welcome back to my wonderful channel that I need to start uploading more to. Today, behind me, I have my brand new Porsche Taycan GTS that I am yet to talk about on the YouTube channel. I've talked about it on my TikTok a bunch. Loads of people have seen it. I think it's about time I give an in-depth breakdown of my Porsche Taycan GTS for all the YouTube viewers who may be interested in the Taycan or just curious on what they're like. This is my second Taycan, my first being a Taycan 4S, which I bought in 2020. This one is a Taycan GTS, the 2023 model of the car. It has a lot of updates and a lot of similarities as well as differences from the 4S that I had previously. The main differences of the car I'll go through. I'll also speak about some of the updated software functionalities. I'll speak about charging and general ownership. So before I get started going in depth about the car, I thought I'd give you a overview of the spec that I chose um, for my Taycan GTS. So my Taycan GTS I ordered in 2022. It was on a massive backlog, um, so it took a while to get here and it actually arrived the day before New Year's, so that was pretty cool, or they call that New Year's Eve, I think. <laughs> anyway, my prior, previous Taycan was a jet black metallic. On this one, I've chosen Carrera white metallic just because I wanted something different from what I had previously. But to liven the spec up, I've specced it with a few things that I'll go through. Um, like, for example, the black badge on the back, the blacked out Porsche uh, light bar. Um, I've also put carbon fiber details everywhere on the car, as you can see there. So that's carbon fiber. The side sills are carbon fiber along the side of the car as well as black details such as this, which is not on right now, but I'll show you that in a moment. Oh, it is on. <laughs> black door handles and a black carbon fiber on the front as well as the sports design kit that comes standard with the GTS. I also spec'd the GTS wheels. These are 21 inch wheels. Um, they look much better than the other options. A lot of the other options give me very strong EV vibes. As some of you may know, my prior, previous Taycan had the um, Aero Blade wheels, um, which were cool. I painted them black, but I think this is just a bit cooler. It sets the car off a bit more. I also once again spec the panoramic roof, which is an essential for any Taycan, I feel. I also spec um, insulating and th no, thermally insulated and um, sound acoustically damping glass. I, I can't remember the exact name, but as you can see, it's got this like slight green tint to it, which is part of that um, signifier that you've got the acoustically insulated glass. Um, tinted windows on the rear, just to add that black contrast, make the car look a bit more sporty. Um, yeah, no, this is my um, Taycan GTS. I love it. Um, I think it looks a lot more sporty than my um, 4S did. And I think it also, pronounces the uh, the shape of the car better. Where I had a black car before, I feel like everything was hidden, but now I feel like you can really admire and appreciate the car for what it is. On the exterior, I've also chosen to go for the advanced matrix design LED lights. So these lights um, have 84 individual pixels, I believe, that can light up the road in front of you. They're not as advanced as the lights that you get on other cars these days, such as Audis, BMWs or Mercedes, but Porsche has promised for the next updated version of the Taycan, which should be arriving sometime later this year or next year, they will be doing a more advanced system that will be, I think, twice as bright, they said. Surround view is something I would also recommend for any Taycan or potential Taycan owner. The car is massively wide, it's deceivingly wide. It's about the size of an S-Class when it comes to width. The length isn't too much, but um, it's definitely a big, big car. So you do want to look at getting surround view just to protect the wheels and protect the body panels when you're parking or when you're going through tight lanes. As you can see here as well, I also have the adaptive cruise control system. Um, so Porsche calls the inner drive their top tier one. Um, as you can see, the lens is there. It allows the car to kind of drive itself on the motorway or around town. It can start stopping traffic and accelerate, slow down with the traffic. So it takes a bit of that burden off you. And then when you're on the motorway, using the camera up here, it allows you to ensure that you stay in lane and that um, you stay in the middle of the lane, not just in lane. Uh, so it, 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 it's nice. It, it makes driving a lot easier. I've never been a massive advocate for it, but experiencing it on a few of my cars now, I think it's something that people should look into, especially if they're going to be doing a lot of motorway miles. Inside the Taycan GTS is very, very similar to the Taycan 4S I had previously. There has been a few updates, as well as a few tweaks to the interior um, and ergonomics of the car. One of the tweaks that I noticed is that the door handle is very different. In my Taycan 4S, it used to pop out a lot more. Now, 
it feels a bit stiffer and you don't really need to push it as much in order to unlock the door. Before I always used to get door not opened or there'll be a warning here saying pull handle to open door, which was annoying at times. As you can see, it's got carbon fiber all along here. We've got carbon fiber trim in the interior and that's part of the GTS pack of the car. Um, it is such a nice interior. I think Alcantara and a dark interior actually suits the Taycan, especially with the red details. Um, previously it had a crayon interior, which is literally just like one shade under white. And that meant that it was very bright in here all the time. But I think this equally does the car justice. And a lot of people have seen the interior of this car and have commented that they think it's actually nicer than the lighter leather interior that I had in my 4S. So the Taycan 4S that I had previously had about 530 horsepower on overboost or during launch control. This Taycan GTS I have now has 598, so just shy of 600. Um, the difference is noticeable, but it's noticeable once you're moving, not at the lower ends. So I can't really tell the difference i've driven a turbo as well and again i couldn't really tell the difference but i i could see the speed was noticeably faster it just didn't feel any different to what it uh, feels in this car so far the furthest range i've seen from this um, car is 216 miles and that's because i bought it in winter batteries in cold temperatures are not very good. They don't function very well um, because the battery chemistry, the way it works, it means that they're not in their optimal operating range. Um, when it's warmer, I would let you guys know what the uh, range will be like, but in my Taycan 4S, as a comparison, I used to get about 230 miles in um, really warm weather. Um, the most I ever saw on there was 315, I believe, but that's when I was in range mode. AC was on like minimal and I was cruising. The car also has updated software, so it's faster. System they're using is way way better than the one I had in my Taycan 4S even though that was updated it still wasn't as fast as this one is um even when I click on things like car the load time seems to be a lot faster than it was before I used to get a lot of stuttering when this car would move around in this screen but it doesn't do it anymore which is nice to see that Porsche has worked on these things to improve the user experience also this sport seats they're really nice they're comfortable I thought they would be uncomfortable but they actually do a really good job of holding you in and they're bolster adjustable and it also comes with memory seats so I would either say get this or the comfort seats I like the design of these a lot more I would also say every Taycan owner should get the five seat version of the Taycan. Always option that extra seat in the back. It is essential. As well as the ambient light system, that's another essential. It just brings some light into the interior. Right now I have it on dynamic mode, so it changes color depending on what song's playing. But if I go into the comfort settings car and I press ambient lighting, I can select color here. As you can see, it's on dynamic. So I was listening to a song with a yellow artwork before. I can honestly say I love Porsche Taycans. This is my second Porsche Taycan. My first Taycan I was looking forward to. I remember placing my first order for it and waiting months and months for it to arrive. This one I have been blown away by. It knocks the 4S out of the water and it also provides a better driver and user experience just because the car is that much more dialed in. Um, the car has a lot of mass but this does a good job of hiding it. It's also fast enough. Um, the Turbo and Turbo S are really really good cars. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them but at a certain point it's like uh i, I can't notice the difference it's I, I don't need 700 horsepower and 0 to 16 to, well do i i have other cars so I, I don't need that i have a lamborghini Aventador svj i have my ferrari 812 superfast right next to me so that's not something i require to enjoy my cars because i can get them other cars but if maybe if it's your only car and you want it super fast, you can go for those ones. But for me, the GTS works just fine. It's the sweet spot. It's always marketed as the sweet spot when it comes to Porsches. This is coming from an owner. This is my second Taycan. So altogether, I've had about three years of Taycan ownership now. And they haven't let me down. Apart from a few bugs in the first versions, they've dialed all those out. The car's been faithful. It's been good. The things I would like to see brought to the Taycan that could probably improve it. More range. Um, the battery inside here, I think it's about 90 kilowatt hours. But Porsche only let you use 82.5 kilowatt hours in order to keep the battery healthy um, i understand but it's like you're preserving the car for the guy that's going to own it in 10 years after me and not me and i would like to be able to exploit all of that range just so i can you know have confidence when i'm driving i think it'll be cool if porsche actually let you use it but it was like in a buffer zone and it was like using this level of range may degrade the battery over time but in emergencies you could use it i think that would have been cool i also think another thing they could add to this car is soft closed doors i just don't know why it's not on this car um other cars have it every other car that i can think of in this segment can get it as an option i think that's pretty much it it's just a really amazing car um i'm interested to see what the facelift will be like but for now um, i would definitely recommend a Taycan. and if you have the money 
the Taycan GTS is the one to go for. But for now, um, that's all. This was just like a chill, like, video, nothing too serious. But, um, yeah, I'll try and provide more content. My, I'm trying to get on to being, like, I'm going to do something weekly for you guys, just so you can have something to enjoy. Um, and I'm trying to make it a bit more personable, personable, personal, um, just so it can be more um, of a direct mirror to the content that I put on my TikTok, which is at Tommy Music, even though this is Tommy Cars or Tommy Auto. Sorry. But anyway, have a nice day, and um, thank you for watching.